Cool. So, um, yeah, this is like Bill had said, this would be a lightning talk, so I'm going to aim for 10 minutes. Uh, we'll see if I get there, or if I do the less. So I'm going to talk about Re React Storybook, but I wanted to ask, how many people do React for in like production at work? Good for the most of you. Okay, I wasn't sure what the Chicago scene is. I'm actually from Oakland, California, so I'm actually here for the week on work. Um, and I reach out to Bill to see if I can do a quick lightning talk on React Storybook. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump it right into it. Uh, has anybody ever seen this Netflix show? It's a, a virtual series. Don't feel bad because... Yeah, it, I mean, it's pretty good, except for Jaden Smith's acting. I apologize for that. Um, but basically, I just wanted to explain this and kind of preface what I'm going to talk about um, with this actual show, which is about kids in the Bronx. Um, back at the end of disco, as disco was waning, uh, hip-hop came up. But they didn't call it hip-hop in the show. They don't really know what it's called. Um, so... I, found, I saw this talk. I saw this show before I gave this talk uh, originally uh, at a conference in Atlanta, and I found the parallels really jarring. So in this show, they're building a hip hop crew. Uh, back in the day, hip hop usually happened in a crew. It wasn't just like the solo dude. Um, so usually the crew, really the focal point of the crew is the DJ. So you can't really have a hip hop crew without a DJ, and they focus that in the show. And then the other half of it that you really, really need. I mean, this usually it's quite a few of these guys, but you need a wordsmith. So now you call him like a rapper or an MC. Um, so there's that. So when I thought about this and I thought about like my problems in coding during the day, because I do React full time um, at my, my job, which I'll get to eventually, um, I started thinking of all the popular like rappers that came through the scene, like they all had a DJ. So you guys ever heard of Fresh Prince? Oh, yes. He's Will Smith. Like now in real in real life, he's Will Smith. Um, but he had a DJ. You guys know what his DJ was? Jazzy, Jazzy Jeff. Jeff. Good. You guys, you guys know rap here. Cool. So Snoop Dogg, who's his DJ? Uh, who was his DJ when he first came out? Dre. Dre. Good. Awesome. So this one's gonna be a little confusing. Well, I'm just gonna show you. Who's Kanye's D DJ? <laughs> Himself. <laughs> you guys are smart. You know when I did this in San Francisco, they didn't. I think, yeah. <laughs> so Kanye is his own DJ. So I started bringing the pearls because we actually hired our first designer at the company I worked for. And I was first front end developer. Um, to, I, they hired me to do Angular, convert all their Angular code to React. And so we had our first designer. So we, we, I realized that, so sorry, I preface, I live in Oakland, California. I don't code, I don't, uh, I don't design, I code. And then we hired Rafa, who's our first designer. Uh, Rafa's. He's pretty big in the design scene, um, but Rafa is what you would call like a unicorn because he actually knows code. Uh, prior to hiring him, he actually built a Swift app on his own. He just learned Swift on his own. He actually had a CS degree, but decided to go design instead. So he kind of knew the concepts, but he just taught himself Swift, made an app, put it on the App Store. Did did pretty well. Um, so it's safe to say that Rafa knows code, which is uh, it's pretty nice to have a designer that knows code because then you can actually talk on the same level. Um, and I like to joke that Rob, Rob is my Kanye. So he can actually, he does a lot of the, the code for the actual app implementation on his own. And then he comes to me when he needs like the JSX help or the, the JavaScript help or just getting his system to run. Um, so I went through all that because I work at Netlify. That's a company that I work for that we, we converted the Angular to React. We have React today. It's like full time. We run everything React. Um, aside from marketing sites, but it's because it's all HTML. Um, and so Netlify, we are a host of websites right the front end Heroku. Um, we're a Git-centric uh, workflow um, to host your front end centric apps. So companies like Lodash are on Netlify companies. Plugins like their documentation of Lodash is on Netlify. Uh, Flow is on Netlify. So a lot of documentation. Uh, if you outgrow GitHub pages, you'll come to us because we have more features. Um, and these types of sites are actually called, we call them Jamstack sites. I don't know if the terms are really that popular, but I do a podcast called Jamstack Radio. So check it out. It's a podcast. It's on iTunes and all those other things. Um, I put this up because I have these stickers that I want to get rid of. So if you want a sticker that looks really cool and 90s-like, uh, sort of like Fresh Prince, uh, come see me and talk to me. Uh, but then we found out really quickly once Rafa came on, we actually taught our, I'm moving fast because I just want to hit that 10-minute mark. But um, Rafa knew, he, oh, sorry, React is just JavaScript, basically. You guys, most of you guys do this full time. It's not too hard to pick up. It's not like things like Angular is nice. Uh, we came from Angular 1.3. Um, 
which was it was nice experience using AUR 1.3 because only one person wrote the, the code. Uh, so there was no confusion uh, when working with it. Uh, we'd have to go through all the different levels of Angular as you get to like whatever 1.5.8, I think, is the latest. I don't know. And uh, so then once I just showed Rafa, this is basically your JavaScript. Um, this is our site card component that I'll talk about in a little, little bit later about React Storybook, and I'll get to that eventually. But basically, I just had to break it down to them say, this is JSX. Uh, we're using CSS modules here uh, to work with this. Uh, actually, are we? Yeah, uh, for the mo yeah, we actually are. Uh, we, we kind of flop back and forth. I don't know if you guys use styling and React. It's kind of crazy. Um, hopefully, they'll figure that out. Uh, so Rafa knows CSS. He, JSX is teachable. So we got to the point where he was able to contribute React code pretty easily, which was super nice because we had a large project. After we converted, once I converted the Angular code to React, um, we wanted to actually upgrade the design. And the component that I showed you before was a sidecar component, and that's what it is. And this is what we were trying to get to. So this was like the this is the actual implementation of today. So if you go to app.netlify.com, sign up, deploy a site, and you, you would see one of those cards. And just pointing out that that's what we're looking at. So when we got to design 2.0, this is the process that started. Rafa created a sketch file. Anybody work with Sketch? It's pretty cool, but I don't get it. So I'm not a designer. <laughs> uh, Envision's kind of cool because you can put Sketch files up like GitHub, so you can like, I can see it. I don't have to download Sketch to do it. Uh, and then that's what it looks like on Envision. So that was his like his mock, his prototype. Uh, but the problem is designers be designing, and those are designer these designer tools. Like I don't want to have to log in Envision to figure out how to like what color he's trying to choose, which. I don't think Envision today actually you can actually know what the hex code is for the color. So it's kind of, and Sketch you can, but I don't want to download Sketch because I'm not a designer. So yeah, again, I don't design. Stuff gets lost in translation. So then comes React Storybook. So we're finally to the meat of the actual talk. Um, oh, that was really fast. I can slow down a little bit for you guys. So this is what Storybooks looks like. Has anybody ever used it? Cool. So Storybook uh, it was like a Hacker News back in like March-ish around then. I, it was really popular for like one day, and then uh, people moved on. So for some reason, they keep talking about this and at meetups and stuff like that. Uh, but the idea is that you have a sandbox for you to be able to put your React components in. We can test them in house, like you can test them in the code, but it won't break the rest of your app. So going back to my first intro, me and Rafa were able to get down. Uh, he was actually able to get down in the code. Uh, that's the uh, definition of get down. You can look that up. Uh, but what really what it means is that we're speaking the same language. Like I don't have to look at sketch files. He now knows a little bit of JavaScript. He's meet me on my level, uh, which is awesome. So that way we got to the point where if we had a feature to implement, Rafa could actually throw all the mocks in JavaScript code and CSS and JSX, and then I would just connect the Redux stores. Uh, I did a talk in actually last week where I joked I'm actually a junior Redux developer because that's all I do is just connect the back end to our front end and then make sure action creators are created. So uh, that's my job now. Uh, and then again, going back to the harken back on sandboxes. Uh, sandboxes are great, but it's, they're very messy when you try to move from envision to code. Uh, you just some things that just, again, get lost in translation. And that's what is the beauty about React Storybook. You can actually have the sandbox for your designer to tinker with. Um, it doesn't even have to be the designer. Like if you have a front end developer and someone else is doing more of the Redux stuff, like someone could be focused on just implementation of the JSX and CSS. Um, was a perfect workflow because, like as I mentioned, I was a front end developer and Rafa was our designer. We're we're actually a, a team of ten in the company, so we just needed the extra bandwidth. And going back to the site card, I created this site card story. And Storybook, installing it, it's, it's pretty simple now. It's pretty trivial, because uh, they have a CLI to get everything started. Uh, it was kind of harder to get started uh, before. But what you're essentially doing is adding a React app inside of your React app. So Storybook actually runs on a different port. So if you run, usually I'll just do a script command, like npm run Storybook. And then I can see my Storybook separate from my actually React app, um, which is super nice, because it sources from the same components in the same app, but you can just point up to two different ports to be able to test. Um, this is the basics of the code. Um, the bottom half is what we'll really focus on. The, you just create from the function, you import it from Storybook. You'll create stories of is the function. And then you'll create your names and uh, other stuff, which I break down here. So that's the card we're looking at. Uh, the name, site name's there, uh, plan name's there. 
I did want to point out that we you can do decorators. So if you wanted to add specific CSS for your stories, uh, this is really killer for stuff like animations. You can have specific animations to test in the sandbox. So there's a lot of things that you just you have to reload the page if you really want to, or you can open up the Chrome console and slow down the animations and see what it's like. Or you can just do storybook and do all that separate, again, in the sandbox. And then what we found out, uh, and sorry, I'm going really fast. You can actually approach me for questions as well um, after I've done this a lot. Um, I can also do questions if Bill allows to. Uh, but I can actually replace different images in the cards that I have. Um, so if I wanted to see what images, if I had a larger image and I want to see if it scales down properly using CSS, or et cetera, I can do that in the side of the confines of Storybook. Uh, and then back, this is actually the, again, this is the card component. Um, and this is our basic card that we actually get re reused around our entire app. And it looks like this. So we just have an empty box and we throw stuff inside of it. So we can then also test in Storybook what it looks like. I had another card that I deleted, but I'll show you in a live demo uh, very quickly. Uh, there's also add-ins for a Storybook. So if you have specific notes, um, if you want to do like find out what handlers are firing and Redux actions or file uh, test Redux actions in the sandbox, you can also do that with other plugins. On top of that, you can leave comments, um, et cetera. And what's really cool is that if you go to reactstorybook.netlify.com, that's that is a storybook. It's not what we we have updated now. This is actually this is like our sandbox for the talk. Um, we actually have a newer one, which is not live yet. Uh, but it's also you can build it can have its own webpack config too. So things that are specific to storybooking is having your storybook that web or webpack that storybook that js that whatever is the thing. Uh, this is the only way you can install it. I'm just kidding. Uh, you can install it with npm as well. Um, and that's pretty much it. Some benefits. Uh, one, we speak the same language. Um, it's actually ra uh, enabling rapid prototyping in our React app, uh, which I'll show you uh, real briefly. And designers can also do style and style sheets. They can actually just do what they know well, which is like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, not React, not Redux, all that other stuff. They don't have to worry about that. And we got to the point where we were able to, again, get down. So it was pretty amazing. Uh, so I talked a lot about storybooks, but I just have one more thing to mention, which is a feature of Netlify, which is deploy previews, which makes this easier since we can deploy on Webpack separately. We, every time we push to master, or actually we push, we can actually deploy a version of Storybook live separate on a different URL, separate from our Netlify.com, which is super awesome. Check it out. We have a blog post on that. Uh, and now Rafa knows React. I didn't mention in the beginning, but all my slides are on chancetorapper.netlify.com. So check it out if you really want to. Any questions? That's a whirlwind, huh? Oh, do you like yarn? Um, <laughs> I do like Yarn. Uh, it's great. There's some problems with it. Uh, we actually started using Yarn pretty early uh, because Yarn's hosted with us as well. Uh, a lot of the Facebook stuff's hosted with us. Um, yeah, I use it. I pretty much use it all the time, mainly because it's so new and there's some bugs with it. So I use it so that way I can make sure it works for our customers. Um, but yeah, I prefer it at this point now. Uh, there are some issues where there's like, it doesn't. It's really fast, but sometimes there's multiple, like doubles of packages that are in there. Um, so there's an open issue, I think, that probably got closed by now about that. But they're pretty fast uh, about solving stuff. And I just wanted to show, since I'm just going to take advantage of your attention, uh, but this is the, uh, actually, let me mirror the screen. I don't get crazy. Oh, Facebook notification. All right. Yeah, so this is a storybook. This is what it looks like. This is uh, basically that React storybook.netlify.com. Uh, this is what I was showing you. We have some other things that, like pricing, uh, the screen resolution is crazy, so it's like cut off. But things like that you can actually test in the confines of storybook. So if you have like a weird resolution on your screen, or you want to test like mobile and stuff like that, you can test it that way. Um, but this is our live storybook. So all that stuff I showed you, we called it 2.0, but it was really 1.5. Or I guess it was 2.0, but all this is now 2.1 because we decided we didn't like the design, so we just updated everything. So things like you could barely see that, but uh, everybody does this now. We have that anticipated loading where you see, like, while you're waiting for your Redux action to populate your store, um, you get that, like, weird, like, loading thing. Like, that would be super annoying to keep hitting refresh to see, like, what that looks like. 
And I guess you can like turn off the Redux actions into your component and then test it, or you can just use Storybook, import the component directly. Sorry, I didn't. I kind of brushed by, by that. You're importing straight components from your app into Storybook using them just like you would use in your app, and you can test them in the confines of Storybook. So, highly recommend. This is open source. Uh, not this, but Storybook itself. Uh, they need a lot of help with a lot of issues. So if you guys like doing open source, it's an easy way to get your feet wet. Now do you have questions? Do you want to see something? Maybe I just missed it, but this is useful for the designer too because they can edit the CSS from your app directly or what? Yeah, yeah. So Rafa edits the CSS directly. What we do now, instead of using Sketch and Vision, and then I do it, he now just goes Sketch, put it, well, if he gets that far, now he's at the point where he just goes straight to the app, creates a component, puts it in Storybook, makes sure the CSS, uh, I'm trying to get me, uh, makes sure the CSS actually um, updates, does what he wants, and then when, it, when he wants it to work live, he'll tell me, I put it, I drop it on the app, I connect it to React Store, and I do my junior developer um, hat, or junior Redux developer hat. Cool. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys want to talk to me in person and be too shy, uh, I know I was very quick. Um, I'm here until tomorrow morning. Going back to the bay. Thank you.